Welcome to Human or Athlete. I'm super excited for this week's episode. Uh, we've got none other than Ellie Baker, um, obviously silver medalist in respective age groups and obviously made the big jump up into the seniors, is it? Adults, yeah. whatever. Um, and obviously in the last, cu- last couple of weeks in Poland and obviously came forth and yeah, congrats to you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to be on the podcast. So thank you. Brilliant. Um, let's jump right in and kind of obviously you've had a long journey to these Euros and everything and everything that's come with it. Kind of give people an idea into kind of what you've gone through in your story to get here. Yeah. Well, I started um, running in year six. So I think that's about age 10 or 11 years mm-hmm. old. So it, I've, well, I'm 22 now. So that is quite a lot of years of literally <laughs> just training every day until this point so um I think like when I was younger I did take it quite seriously because it was definitely a passion of mine from a young age but I definitely very much just enjoyed it and had it as a social aspect as well so I think the first few years you know probably up until like year 10 it was sort of more of a social hobby met my friends at training went there and it was just a nice sort of like chilled out but like keep me fit Mm-hmm. It was a good hobby to do. So I think that was where it all started, really. My nan and granddad used to just take me down to the local running club, and I did like a few fun runs, and my parents were like, mm-hmm. she's good at this, so we'll get her to do the running. Um, but yeah, so that was that was sort of where it started all them years ago, and then it's just been a lot of hard work um, until this point, so yeah. <laughs> what were the like the younger Euros, like the under-20s, under-23 ones? So the under 20, even to make the teams is very difficult in Great Britain because I, the, it seems that the GB athletes are just seem to be the best in Europe. So it's Man. to even make the, the team is very difficult. And um, so, yeah, to, you have to come basically top two or three at your national championships mm-hmm. and run a qualifying time to get selected to these um, competitions. Mm-hmm. So my first one was um, Grosseto in Italy, and that was in 2017. And I hadn't made any... So I've done English schools and things like that, so they were definitely the, the development development um, sort of championships that would got, got me to that point. And I mm-hmm. came third second and first in that order at English Mm -hmm. school (laughs) (laughs) so I worked my way up but um that was sort of like a championship feel to it so when it comes to nationals I was already quite used to you know heats and then finals and then um I came I think third it was in the nationals Mm -hmm. and um one girl was just for the lower age group and then they took two um girls for my age group which was the under 20s and I made the GB team and I was just so ecstatic to have made it because it was mm-hmm. like my first ever taste of like doing it sort mm-hmm. of professionally even though it was age group but it sort of gives you that vibe that it, it is sort of like a really big step awesome. and yeah so so that went really well actually um I got out my heats um I was top two to get through and then I come second in the final but right. as I said, the British um, girls were very strong because the person that beat me was a Brit. So, oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So, and actually in the under 23s as well, my, right. like one of my best friends, Gemma Rika, she won that and I come second. So I've always been beaten by a Brit. So technically. It could be worse. Yeah. Yeah. So um, out of the other countries, I was. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> but that, that was really nice. Like they were definitely. I think give me a lot of experience to come in into the senior um, sort of championships, what I've just competed in. And that gave me a lot of experience, like just the recovery through rounds and things like that. It does, you do just gain um, every, all the competitions you do, you sort of learn a little bit more about yourself and what you need. Mm-hmm. So yeah, so it was, I, I kind of like was very happy to medal at them championships, but um, I always like, it seems like when you come second, you always want to come first. So it's always mm-hmm. like frustrating when you yeah. don't like win but (laughs) isn't it always (laughs) yeah (laughs) um what was it like getting into this year it's like obviously you said like the nationals for each one did you have to do the same for this one so because of covid it's been very different this year Mm -hmm. um it was sort of like we had well there was no races so Mm -hmm. i can't actually fly at the moment because i'm under the england athletics exemption so they've basically said if you're like through England athletics you can't fly abroad at the moment 
but if you're through mm-hmm. British athletics, you can fly abroad. So okay. it's sort of all a bit confusing. Yeah. Um. So I was like, right, well, there's no races for me then, because mm-hmm. all the races have sort of been around Europe and people are traveling. But I just haven't been able to travel. So I literally had two races in the calendar where I could run the qualifying time for these European championships. Mm-hmm. I was like, no pressure, but I've got <laughs> yeah. two attempts and that's it. Yeah. Um, and so I, ca- I actually went, before they brought that rule in, um, I was able to go on a training camp to Dubai mm-hmm. and I did all my training for four weeks out in Dubai just before the indoors. And then as I flew home, they sort of stopped the travel for England athletics. Oh, so no. I was actually really fortunate to get my training mm-hmm. block in sunny weather and yeah. go with my training group. So I was lucky to have had that. And that really did help me push on because I was training with people like Laura Muir, Gemma Reiki mm-hmm. out there. So they were really helping push me on mm-hmm. um, in sessions. So when I flew back from there, I had the two attempts to get to get races yeah. and they, they had to be in, in England. So I went to Manchester and on my first race, I was like sitting in the race and I was like, I'm not going to take this out because one of the Irish girls was meant to be going for like um, the Irish record, which was like two minutes. No, so no. I was like, well that they're, they're going to go out fast and yeah. then for some reason the Irish girl didn't go out fast and I was like oh, what am I going to do so I was like weighing up my options but I was quite boxed in and yeah. I was like oh my gosh I don't have many attempts to get this like yeah. qualifying time so we'd already it's like indoors is it 200 meter laps so we'd done it's four mm-hmm. laps so we'd done mm-hmm. about two laps and I was like oh my gosh we've got to get going because like the time yeah. was, I could, when I'm going round, I can hear it's quite slow yeah so then I just like hit the front with like 300 meters to go and I was just like trying to catch up Bombed time <laughs> yeah uh, but luckily I ran the time which was 202 I had to run mm-hmm. sub 203 to get the qualifying time so that, I ran that on my first race out so that was quite good. <laughs> yeah I was like relieved I was like thank god and then I was so lucky I actually did run it that day because then um the only other competition there was was the British trials which was the following mm-hmm. weekend and basically you had to run um like the event you wanted to do at the Europeans but you didn't have to turn up so it was very weird like usually you have to turn up to the British trials you have to come top three or top two to get to the championships Mm -hmm. but they because of COVID they sort of said like you don't actually have to come if you've got the qualifying time you don't actually have to come okay so it was very like confusing like what everyone was going to do because um Keely had the time he was at Europeans Izzy had the time and I had the time um, and Gemma Riki had the time and we didn't know whether Gemma was going to do the 800 or not and you're only allowed three people to go so then no one put their name down for nationals I was the only one in the race so it started out that Keely was going to do it I was going to do it Izzy was going to do it Gemma was never going to do indoors in the end but we didn't know that at the time and then I was the only one left in the race. And I was like, well, I can't just race myself. (laughs) (laughs) No way. (laughs) Yeah. So they basically decided they weren't going to do it because um, by like 0.02 of a second, like Izzy had a faster time than me. So they were sitting prettier than I was because I didn't have the fastest time. So I was thinking, oh my God, like I don't have enough or opportunity Mm -hmm. to run a bit faster to get that automatic selection but then as it stands Gemma didn't end up wanting to do the 800 and they picked all three of us to go Mm -hmm. but that week I was like well what am I going to do they they gave me an option I can run the race on my own but my time wouldn't count and because it's not Uh... part of the race so it would have been pointless or I can do the 1500 to like just show that I'm informed so I was just like oh my god well I, if the time's not going to count for the eight then there's no point me doing that so I went and did the 1500 mm-hmm. and then I I got a personal best I was actually like 0.6 like of a second off of the European qualifying time for the 1500 oh, and no. I hadn't done any training for it so I was like oh <laughs> that's quite good but um yeah I think it just showed that I was in good form and then from me running well there they was like do you know what we we'll just take all three girls and then all three of us made it to the final so it was a good choice <laughs> no way that's crazy yeah when yeah. was that like when was that kind of trip to Dubai so the trip to Dubai was um well, I think it was February, the whole of February we sort of was out there. Like last year, like 2020? No, like just... Okay, just gone, just before. Yeah, oh, so it's yeah. all been like in a space of like two yeah, months, like it, just it, kind of... Crams. Yeah, so we was doing like our last lot of like uh, sharpening up sessions for the 800 
stuff like more speed work out there in the sun and then coming back ready to like taper down and race so so what was it like last year in that whole kind of process knowing you've got kind of a, a crazy two three months coming up how do you get kind of you know physically mentally ready for like for example everything well last year in lockdown when we hit the first lockdown I sort of I didn't know if there was going to be any races that went ahead. Like everything seemed to be getting pulled out of the calendar and like there didn't seem to be any races coming up. So I was thinking, right, well, there's going to be no races. We've never had like a pandemic before. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking, well, everything's getting cancelled. There's no way that anything's going to go ahead. So I literally, I, I did all the training, but diet wise and things like that I slapped big time and I ate so much <laughs> I was like there's no races I just have some digesters have like everything I love that I can't need to eat I was literally just eating because I was like well mm -hmm. we're not gonna be racing anytime soon and that was like March April sort of time last year and I was thinking well we're not gonna race so it's fine mm -hmm. I'll just train and then eat <laughs> <laughs> so I did I properly slapped and I put on so much weight yeah, and I don't, I don't really know how it happened because I was obviously like, I was still training every day, but I just must have been eating way more than I was burning. Yeah, I ended up putting on like five kg, which for me, <laughs> like trying like lug that round, like <laughs> trying to train was just a nightmare. Then my training was going down here, and I was like, oh no. Then they like come out and was like, right guys, there's going to be races. Like we've put it on at the mm. end of the summer. Like the, we, we are going to be racing. Um, we just set it up really safely. And I was like, oh, oh no. <laughs> what have I done? I was like, why am I eating so much? <laughs> so I literally was like trying to burn so much weight mm -hmm. before, um, like cut weight before I raced. And um, I did still do British champs, but there was no like major championships to aim for last year. But I come third at British Champs, but literally it was an, an ideal preparation no. for it at all. So I sort of made a pact in like October time. I was like, I'm never like, no matter what happens with pandemic, what happens with lockdowns, I'm not letting like that side of things slide again. Like I thought I'd make a pact of myself. That's it. And I'm, I'm mm -hmm. never doing that again. So what I was that promise? Just like to just, just diet don't everything? Pack. Like what, we're a hundred percent on everything. Like, all like the little percentages that you think that you can let go of like you just can't if you want to be the best because someone else is doing everything so mm -hmm. if you're not doing it then you're not going to be the best so mm -hmm. I was just like I will never put myself in that situation where I'm like not giving myself the best possible mm -hmm. chance so I sort of made a pact with myself in October that everything was going to be 100% and I now have like we um meet me <laughs> weekly <laughs> meetings with my brother um every single Sunday to just check that I'm on task like an accountability partner yeah, yeah literally so he sort of helped me with all my nutrition and um just making sure like even little things like I've basically bought this sleep ring okay and it like monitors my sleep so it tells me nice. how hours I've had things like yeah. that so I'm just like all the little bits that I sort of slacked on before I just mm -hmm. made a pact that this year that wasn't going to happen mm -hmm. and since doing it I've just seen like ridiculous improvements in my training in like racing and things like that so I think it's the little bits that do make the big difference sometimes 100 the big question is how how long do you sleep how long do I sleep? I have to have nine hours in bed and then nine at least eight hours of sleep. So as long as I get my nine hours, you know, in bed. Okay. <laughs> no, no, I, like, I think that's good. I think, what was it? Anywhere between seven and a half to nine is like optimal. Yeah. That's why. That's so, yeah. yeah. I can't function now if I have less than like eight or nine hours. I just can't. I, that's what I, I mean, I'm really bad in the mornings. Really? And like, I'm lucky that football is kind of like a t half, 10, 11 start. So I'm not too yeah. bad usually, but yeah. yeah. It's uh, I'm bad at one as well. I can't go. Like, my, my coach is literally like, You're terrible. Like, literally, <laughs> I'm the worst. I'm so I'm sort of like one of them people that I just like do pointless stuff in the evening, and then I'm like, The time's gone, and I'm not asleep, and it's like half 12, and I'm mm -hmm. still awake. <laughs> and then I like can't wake up, like, it's mm -hmm. horrible. So, like, I've been trying to change that about myself, you know, getting a better routine. But my coach is like, I'm still like a zombie in the morning. Like, I just can't help <laughs> it. It's the way I am. <laughs> when when you're not racing and like in those pointless evenings, what do you kind of focus on? Where's your mind at? Is it always on track or different things? 
I think um, it's definitely good to not be focusing on it like 24 seven of the day. Like I just, I have a lot of like free time because I'm not doing anything on the side, like education wise mm -hmm. and things like that. But I feel like I've now learned what works for me and I like know how to keep myself busy. And I think recovery is massive as well. So I may not be thinking about it, but I know the things I've got to do in the evening for recovery. Mm -hmm. A lot of the time I don't really have time to like think about it because I'm, I'm training two or three times a day. So by the time the evening comes, I'm just knackered and I just want to chill out, like even put Norma text on, like flush my legs yeah. out, watch TV, just that sort of recovery things and just getting enough sleep and just chilling out in the evenings. I think it's important to sort of like, if you're training that hard, just sort of relax. <laughs> yeah, no, I think, I mean, I think there's a big, like a big trend. I don't know if it's like that, but it's like the whole Michael Jordan, David Goggins kind of thing, which is like obliterate your body and everything and keep yeah. doing and keep doing. Yeah. And it's kind of become sort of like a, a thing, which is like, everyone's like, I've got to keep doing and doing and doing. Yeah. But there's actually like, it, there's no, it's kind of just become a trend and it's not actually helping you and everyone's like. Yeah, I have the, so much like admiration for them. Like I think they don't, yeah, them. yeah, exactly. But I don't think that that works for everyone. I mm -hmm. think massively, if you're not getting the recovery, you're never gonna be able to perform as well as you can possibly perform. And I think very much different in certain sports where you can hit like what you're doing mm. a bit harder yeah but if you're hitting everything hard in running like there is going to be a plateau and you are going to just go downhill if you're not getting the recovery side of things done as well so I feel like definitely different with certain sports but it is a good mindset to have yeah I, th I think it's a balance because it's like for me it's like if if that's what I'm constantly doing and it's everything's around that yeah like it just I just don't feel like I'm, I get exhausted so quickly yeah and it's like, if you be present and you give everything in the hour and a half, you're on the pitch or on the oh. track or whatever, give it all in the gym. And then the second you kind of, you're done, shut off and then be present in resting and yeah. enjoy the time with other people. And for there, for me, you get the the benefits out of everything in a lot more kind of efficient and shorter time Yeah. than then needing to recover three weeks later when you've like completely ruined your body from you probably going crazy. Up injuries, like it's definitely mm -hmm. quality over quantity because I feel like that even in running like there's these junk milers that will just love a run like they'll just <laughs> love the miles they'll go for it and then they're like injured the next week and you're like well you did overdo it like yeah. how can you not see that like mm -hmm. running you know 20 something miles a day is not gonna be <laughs> you know beneficial you, in the long run do you always run with Strava or whatever or like everything's distance and time set or do you ever just go for a run for the sake of kind of mental kind of or anything like that um I don't actually have Strava so okay, a so lot what... of people love it I know they do <laughs> <laughs> a lot of athletes like they try and beat each other's times on it but um I don't I've never actually got into Strava but uh everything I know I don't actually run you know just to just run. like out yeah just to no, run I, everything's very much like what my coach sets me mm. like I just do what I'm told basically <laughs> but um yeah so he would just set me what I've got to do and I'll do it but it's not sort of but I think that does help my, me mentally as well so it sort of goes hand in hand but I know I have to do it otherwise you know yeah. I'm not going to be fit and things like that but we have like um he sets my training out and it's kind of each day is different so I actually have Fridays off, so that's my one rest day a week. Yeah. And then um, Mondays would usually be like uh, a speed <clears throat> sort of session in the morning, um, like speed drills, like plyometric work, um, usually with like a two mile warm up, then all the speed drills and plyometric mm -hmm. work, and then like cone runs and things like that. And then it would be like three miles at a fast pace at the end, just like, so I'm doing a bit of both. Yeah. And then in the evening, we do like a spin on the bike or a three mile steady run. So like I'm training twice on a Monday. Then on a Tuesday, we usually do like um, a session. So something on the track or hills or something like mm -hmm. more intense in the morning. And then we would do, go to the gym and then we would do like a heavy lift session in the gym. And then depending on how we feel, if we feel like we'd need a shakeout or anything, we'd do another spin on the bike or something like that. And the evenings mm -hmm. that could be three times um, a day on a yep. Tuesday. And then that would be the same for Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday. So that's yep. my three like proper session days. And then Wednesday would be like two steady runs. So five miles in the morning, three miles in the evening. 
and then um yeah friday rest and sunday will be a long run so eight to ten miles like around an hour running so Fair enough. Yeah, it's more yeah. varied but that's just my program that i've got used to now and what my coach sets to me so what's your relationship like with your coach and like how did you because i'm assuming like you kind of build that environment as like around you yeah so you you do pick your coach so yeah. <laughs> you sort of like uh, i've had quite a few coaches over the years um I started off at my club and uh, Simon Doyle was my coach and he, he sort of set me off and just did like sort of the fun sessions that I used to do with like my <laughs> friends and things like that. So that was quite nice. And then I wanted to take it a little bit more seriously. I think I went to the under, I don't know if it was under 15 or under 17, I'm not sure. But um, I won like the national championships indoors for the 800. And then I was like, that gave me a taste for like winning and like I really was enjoying it and I wanted to take it a bit more serious so then I moved to coach um and I sort of took it a little bit serious then and I started winning like things at English schools and like mm-hmm. coming second third and like sort of building up my way up and then moved coach again so my my next coach was George Harrison so he is like I think I he's close to being 90 now but he was oh, yeah. um, an older guy, but he's got so much experience. I, there was mm-hmm. like a statistic of how many um, English schools champions he's had over the years, and it's just been ridiculous. Right. Like he's just, he's got an MBA, like he, because he trains so many youngsters into really, really good athletes. Mm-hmm. Um, and he's just amazing. I still ring him like all <laughs> the time after my races and stuff like that. But um, yeah, he helped me out uh, for a good few years. And then I moved to my coach that I'm with now. Mm-hmm. Um, and he's called John Big and he is well he's just like a brilliant coach I, I knew that he was good um, I could see like he was bringing on a lot of good athletes but our training group is now really thriving and, and we're definitely mm-hmm. getting better and better but um, our training group is actually called Phoenix Tracks you can follow them on the <laughs> 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 but um, they yeah everyone's doing really well we've got um, Elliot Giles just run like 143 British record indoors mm-hmm. um, uh, my boyfriend Kyle Lankford he's uh, come fourth at the world championship second at the Commonwealth mm-hmm. and then we've got um, Spencer Thomas and George Mills who are both British champions and then um, yeah, so so just like a good group <laughs> of people to be around. So yeah. um, we've definitely definitely got a good relationship with our coaches. Our coaches um, are very very good, and we've got a SNC coach as well called Dan Stepney. So yeah, it's a really good like team to be in, and um, I feel like we thrive off each other because when you're like with like minded people, you sort of just like bounce off each other, and we're always mm-hmm. giving each other banter like. <laughs> um, like if someone's done worse in a race or something, we're like, oh, yeah, yeah you're get it. <laughs> if you don't run well, you know you're going to get it at training. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, no, it's, it's it's a really nice group to be in. But um, yeah, we we are very thankful to have our coach because he does go above and beyond. Would you say that's what kind of makes him special? Is how hard he works? And yeah, like, like every... he literally he puts so much time into all of us and I think like he actually loves it and he enjoys it mm-hmm. so like when someone's passionate about something I feel like they always get results because they are just like really in into what they're doing and really believe the goals that you're you're trying to set so I think the fact that he's got the passion we've got the passion for it it, it really does help and he has learned I mean every one of us he has to communicate with differently because we're mm-hmm. all such different people so he is very very good at being able to look at uh, a personality and mm-hmm. know how to get the best out of that personality so he yeah I think he's done like a psychology course and everything like he's done mm-hmm. all like these little <laughs> things that we don't even know about but he yeah. um, he he's sort of just to make the best athlete and he knows how to bring the best out of each mm-hmm. and every one of us so it's quite nice yeah that's brilliant that bit of emotional intelligence always helps doesn't yeah, it no, definitely. Um, but yeah and like with the environment like I think it's so different for example like football and stuff which is obviously like set and everything's like determined by the coaches as to who you're with and how you play and everything yeah. but having the opportunity to choose that and build this great group and like I think that's brilliant because like you said you know with like-minded people you I can't remember the Denzel Washington thing which is like you've got five millionaires you're going to be the six if you're around five idiots you're going to be the six yeah. and so on so I think that's so important what's the team GB environment like especially like around the Euros and stuff like that really really nice again like 
with the like-minded people they're, mm -hmm. they're all people that are brilliant and amazing at their events and you know they've worked very hard to get to the championships and I think when you're around the people that believe in themselves believe in their abilities want to get the best out of themselves you're sort of like you sort of level up and you're all trying to be the best you can be mm -hmm. and seeing other teammates go and produce amazing um, results on the track. Then you think, well, I want to go and do that. Um, and that just at the dinner table, like when we we were just like getting our food and stuff, the TV would be on and we'd be watching each other on the TV whilst mm -hmm. eating our like dinners yeah. and I'd be like <laughs> screaming at the TV, like, <laughs> hoping they get through the rounds and things like that. So it's quite nice knowing when you're on the uh, like, track that you've got yeah. all the best people watching you mm -hmm. yeah. wanting you to, to get there so I think yeah we just want the best for each other when we're there and we're just like trying to you know even that I'm competing against Izzy and Keely at the mm -hmm. 800 we are very much before the race like let's do it like let's go and get that one two three like we're, we're mm -hmm. trying to um sort of like psych each other up for it yeah. so it's quite nice it was very very nice team to be in yeah that was that was my next question like what in that individual versus team kind of thing because yeah. it obviously is individual yeah. at the end of the day is there any kind of like i mean because like i'd say there's probably more ego in football <laughs> but that like is there ever like kind of like you know obviously it's competitive so where yeah. we're like where's the line and like you know <laughs> it how is does a that fine work? line i gotta say like so at the end of the day you want to win you want to exactly. do the best yeah. you can do so there's no you're standing on that line and you're wanting to race for yourself and you're wanting to win mm -hmm. for yourself but at the same time you get on really well with the girls yeah. <laughs> and you you want them to do well as well maybe it's just not as well as you yeah <laughs> But I would like, obviously, stand on that line. I would have loved to have won, and I would love mm -hmm. the girls to medal too. But you do want the best for yourself, mm -hmm. and that's just athletics and individual sport. But I think I've definitely been like since a young age. I don't think I could have done a team sport. Mm -hmm. I, I'm very much like, if I mess up, that's on me, and I can only blame me. But mm -hmm. if someone else messes up, <laughs> I'm not happy because yeah. <laughs> I'm just like, well could have done that better on my own <laughs> <laughs> sort of like I, it's quite bad I'm not like really a massive team player okay but... <laughs> so anyway, I'm assuming... I am in results of like the team and I'm wanting the team to do well but in sports I don't think I could have been in like a team sport mm -hmm. because I just I just like the accountability to be on myself <laughs> mm -hmm. but is it also not like hard doing everything on your own like because yeah. that can get tough it's sort of like you just get used to it like mm -hmm. I think you're just out there on your own and and I think that is hard at times because you think to yourself if I mess up like I'm not going through like it's all on you and I think you are it's a very very lonely sport to be in but then you mentally know that going into it and, and you've had a lot of experience in all these little races to to the race that you're at mm -hmm. the big races you sort of you're used to it being on you and you're used to sort of having that that pressure um yeah it, it's it is a lonely sport but I quite I quite like it I'm a bit of a loner <laughs> <laughs> even what about even on the bad days like because obviously then it does come down to you and it's yeah. obviously you're gonna have coach and stuff like that but you know massively like I think on them days where you're just lacking that bit of motivation I think in some ways that helps because you're like look if you don't go and do this someone mm -hmm. else is and you are going to be the one that suffers like and only you mm -hmm. but um I think I think that's why a training group is very very good for me mm -hmm. because I can see other people putting in the work and I'm like right yeah. well that's what I need to do to get to where I want to be so mm -hmm. I'm very in the lockdowns it wasn't very good for me because obviously we went with our training groups and I was just on my own like slacking really with, mm -hmm. with eating too much and things like that but um I think it's good for me to be around other people that work hard because then I can see although it's them not doing the work for me I know what I've got to do to be the best yeah. I know what they're doing and I think in a way that having that sort of kind of a team really is beneficial to me yeah. but I think with um competing I feel like it's better to be in a sport where I if I get it wrong, I can blame me and I can hate myself. But <laughs> if I don't, then it's really good. <laughs> if yeah. I get if I get it good, then it's good. <laughs> no, I get that. Like for me, 
it, it's weird because obviously I'm in team sport now, but I big part yeah. of my growing up was playing tennis and like, oh, wow. you know, like out in Switzerland, that was like one of my big things and that was one of my dreams. And I used to have a massive anger, like losing and like throw my racket around, scream to where I was like 10, 11, 12 years old, yeah, yeah. like losing yeah. it. And I had to like literally learn the like on my own to deal with myself. Yeah. Because it's obviously kind of it's you against you, especially even more running than yeah. like than anything yeah. else. So like how do you kind of battle yourself or like how yeah. do you like talk to yourself? What is that self v self kind of situation like? Uh, I when it's bad, it's bad because if you mess up, like you literally hate yourself. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've had like races where like I should have won but I've fallen over or something's mm -hmm. happened and it's gone wrong and then like you just have your like no one else cares everyone yeah. wants themselves to do well and you're the only person that's really stuck there and you've, mm -hmm. you've done crap and and you've got to deal with that whereas everyone else is just like oh well like that person yeah. won but really in my it's only me that's going to be gutted so I feel like when it's bad it isn't it isn't good because you do put a lot of blame on yourself and sometimes it takes like a week or two to just get over a crap race and and it does I think yeah because you just especially accept that, that yeah you just have to accept it like the opportunity's gone I, I sort of like I have a day where I'm just fuming <laughs> where I'm like you're an idiot but then after that day I think Do you know what that opportunity's gone there's more opportunities in the future and if you sit here and dwell on that then the opportunities mm -hmm. in the future are going to slide by you need to just get over yourself pick yourself back up and mm -hmm. go on to the new you know the next thing and I think with running what I really love about it is that there's always another race um mm -hmm. it's it's sort of like you can rewrite what your wrongs quite quickly if you mm -hmm. have races and things like that but obviously if you mess up a championship and then you don't go if you mess up nationals and then you don't go to that championship that is heartbreaking yeah but at the same time I know you'd have to train another year to the next one mm -hmm. <laughs> but that's just what you've got to do yeah and I think um yeah it is cutthroat and especially being uh in Great Britain with such massive um like competition to even get to the Olympics is literally mm -hmm. a, a European final in itself to even get yeah. there so um I think it is it is difficult when things go wrong, but you just learn to deal with yourself. You learn to deal well. There is nothing I can do now that that is gone, mm -hmm. and you can either sit there and like cry, or you can sit there and do something about it. So, yeah, no, I completely agree. <laughs> is there not also like in that selfie self battle, like you versus your body? Because I always go back to like I listened to like Ant Middleton, one of his books, and he he would turn it into like and this is really weird I don't I don't probably advise this but he would like um I'm not gonna really swear but he'd be like f you legs yeah and like he would turn it into him versus his legs to get more out of them yeah so definitely I I'm like come on Ellie like I refer yeah. to myself as a person because yeah. like I think if you're just like oh come on like do you know what I mean mm -hmm. if you're like Ellie like <laughs> you can do this sort of thing yeah it's like you're telling someone and like how you'd passionately tell someone else you're mm -hmm. telling yourself and I definitely do have in my head like even coming around the last end of my final I literally thought I was going to get a medal I was yeah. gutted when I didn't but mm -hmm. in my head I was like you've got this Ellie like you've got this yeah. <laughs> like in my head to just try and get the best out of myself and I think self-talk is massive like I think it's not used enough in sport mm -hmm. and I think people don't really know about it self-talk that yeah. much I I think um just psychology in general people don't spend enough time on mm -hmm. and um that's definitely something I always try and do some motivational content like once a week like if it's a podcast something what mm -hmm. has given me motivation that week just so that I'm tapping into it all yeah. year round um but self-talk is definitely something I've learned this year sort of like when I'm finding it hard just to snap myself back out of it and yeah, like even in sessions, like some of the sessions I do, like my coach literally tries to kill me and I have to get back up off the ground like when I'm swimming in lactic and I just yeah. think I'm not going to be able to do this next rep. Like in my head, like you're, that voice in your head is like, you're not going to be able to do it. But then mm -hmm. it's like snapping yourself out there like, no, no I can. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> I'm going to do it. So it's definitely 
constant like training racing it's a constant mental battle with yourself you've yeah. got that little voice that's like this is hard and then you've got another voice that has to snap that voice out yeah. of it so it yeah. is it is like that but i think like the more you do it the more you get used to being more positive rather than negative and mm -hmm. once you've been there before you know you can do it again sort of thing yeah and it is kind of in that situation like exactly what you said it's time based so mm -hmm. obviously different things are going to change that in positioning and stuff yeah. like that but you know if you know you can do that physically yeah. then yeah. you've kind of obviously you, you you've got that confidence yeah. in your head yeah and i think that's massively a thing that's helped me this year i know how much work i put in this mm -hmm. year and i have confidence in the work i put in because before i think have i done everything and in that voice in my head will be like well, no you haven't you i know you haven't mm -hmm. and then if that creeps in then goodbye to the race because yeah. if you feel like you haven't done everything like you possibly can on that start line that doubt will creep in but yeah. I haven't had any of that doubt this year because I can genuinely say like I have mm -hmm. killed myself this year <laughs> to be where I want to be and I, I didn't have anything in the championships where I'd had any doubt because I was mm -hmm. like I've done everything I possibly can to this point mm -hmm. and now I just need to do what I know I'm capable of and I think when you have no doubts then you go in with more confidence and then with more confidence you, you run better. Yeah. I mean, I think, like, again, that's a big thing for, like, people listen. I am exactly the same in, like, if I go back to, like, the death circuits in pre-season and all that, like, mm. I rely on them yeah. mentally to go back to them and use yeah. them as fuel or yeah. even kind of, like, obviously confidence and stuff. Do you ever kind of use, like, the dark energy as kind of, like, fuel and, like, kind of just not, not like, like, I don't know, dark energy, but, like, you know, you turn it into, like, a personal thing. Do you ever kind of use that? What do you mean? Like, like, like you turn, so, like... For example, I, I, I'm trying to think, like, you'll make it, like, not personal with the people you're running with, but if, like, people haven't said you're good enough or, oh, you know, 100%. the bad press or yeah. all these different things 100%. and all that fear, all that, like, not doubt, but, like, kind of, like, where they've threat, like, you know, got that and yeah. you kind of want to bounce it back off them. I quite like, because I feel like I definitely went into this championships as an underdog. No yeah. one mm -hmm. really expected me to make the final. No one, yeah, and I've had a lot of people that are like, oh, you know, I've had I've had competitions before where people have been like, oh, this stage is too big for her mm -hmm. or whatever. And then I've been like, mm, OK, well, I'm going to prove you wrong. So yeah. <laughs> um, I think definitely just in running as well, it can be a little bit bitchy because people want to win. People don't mm -hmm. want you to be good. People would rather, you know, them train well and you not succeed. So <laughs> um, I think there's definitely a lot of people that are like, oh, like sort of a bit like judgmental or will say yeah. oh, she's not going to do it or have that sort of thing but I love that because I just want to prove them people wrong mm -hmm. and so I think yeah no that definitely is a massive factor but I think even like people like bet against me or whatever yeah. um I quite like it because I'm like yeah. well I've got no pressure then yeah. I'm, I'm an underdog but I'm gonna prove you wrong so yeah. <laughs> it's, I, and I have made a lot of mistakes um in my running career with tactics what I've got wrong before and people have said oh she, you know like she's not a great racer you know she she's made a lot of tactical errors and things like that but if I hadn't have made them tactical errors in mm -hmm. the races that really didn't mean that much I wouldn't have been able to go to the Europeans and have learned all that information of what to do what not to do and then make it through the rounds on tactical races I needed yeah. to make them mistakes to then go and mm -hmm nail it when it when it matters so i think like um it is always nice proving people wrong um so it's something yeah i do i do enjoy 100 <laughs> percent. as you've like obviously raced more and ran a lot more how has like your awareness of yourself kind of grown mm, just just racing more or just yeah training more everything kind of just through me obviously yeah do. I just think through every championship that you do you sort of learn something for, or even every race you do you sort of learn something or maybe I went too early then maybe I should have waited a bit longer and it's very much learning your body and learning when's the right time to go where, how you're feeling things mm -hmm. like that whilst you're in the race and it's sort of like checking in with yourself at each point in the race like am I comfortable like like does the pace need to be moved on sort of thing so you do learn a massive amount through racing I think um in the 1500 I did before the Europeans I took um 
I hit the front with 250 to go and I was running with you know a lot more laps in my legs than I would usually mm -hmm. have so I burnt out a lot quicker than I would <laughs> usually <laughs> Um, but I hit the front and I was like, I'm going for it. And then I was like, oh no, <laughs> like my leg. And I think like a hundred meters out, oh, it was it was like a swimming, but I managed to still run a fast time, but I went too early and I didn't time it well enough. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of it in racing is learning when to time it with your body and things mm -hmm. like that. So I definitely, although everyone was like saying, well, she's gone, like people on the commentary was like, she's gone way too early for an 800 meter runner, which was mm -hmm. true, but I sort of glad I did that then because then it sort of was like, well, I'm going to be a little bit more patient when it comes to Europeans. I'm going to mm -hmm. just sit in, do the minimal that I have to do to get through, and then I'll be a lot fresher come the final. Mm -hmm. So I feel like you have to go through them sort of mm -hmm. thing to learn your body, to learn what's right for you and what, what racing is right for you. And that makes, yeah, a lot of sense. Um, <laughs> I think I know the answer but from what you've just said before, but do you kind of think while you run? Or how does that kind of work? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm I'm always <laughs> talking to myself yeah. in my brain. Um, just like a lot of the time, you can switch off. Like, but I think that fifteen hundred, I was thinking, oh, I'm really bored. Like, <laughs> so many laps. I was like, it's so boring. Like, I'm just sitting here. Whereas the eight is so fast paced, you haven't got time mm -hmm. to think. You've got to be reactive to any moves and things like that. So I think with so many laps I think I was thinking oh god that's why I got impatient that's why I got went mm -hmm. to learn because I yeah. was sitting there like this is a lot of laps like this is yeah, a lot yeah. um so I think yeah but in a lot of ways I sort of talk to myself in the way going through what time have I run that lap in um mm -hmm. am I on target for a fast time things like that will go through your head or just like okay that girl's coming up on my shoulder I need to step out just just being like race aware yeah. and I think you just have these little conversations in your own head <laughs> while you're yeah how, how do you approach like the big picture to like obviously you're only 22 so you obviously got you know, loads of time to obviously go out and smash some more championships um how do you kind of approach like next year or is it kind of like okay if I just keep competing keep racing and like just enjoy what I do I'm gonna get better and then they'll come or how do you like goals how do you approach all of that um, so this year I've definitely set, well, I set myself, um, long-term and short-term goals. So mm -hmm. one of my big goals, but was short-term cause I only had, well, since October, November, <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> five months to, um, get that goal. My goal was to make the European championships. It wasn't to mm -hmm. make the final. It wasn't to, you know, where I was going to finish. I just wanted to make it there cause it'd been my first senior one. And mm -hmm. I I would just be so happy to even make a senior team. Yeah. So going into that, that was definitely my aim to make the team. But um, I think once you're there, you sort of like want more and more and more. And I think yeah. that's like your brain just changes like, right, mm -hmm. um, I've made it here. Now I want to make it to the semi-final. Now I want to yeah. make it to the final. Now I want to get a medal. So I think your brain just sort of like as an athlete, a typical athlete, you just want more and more and more. Mm -hmm. But I set myself goals. So my another goal, like this would be my big long term goal would be to make the Olympic team this year. Yeah. And a lot of people would be like, well, that's a big ask because they would have well, they would have said that in October. Like, but they probably a lot of people would have said I wouldn't have made the European team in October. Mm -hmm. So um, it is a big ask. But if I put the work in and I put the training in and do what I know I'm capable of, I should mm -hmm. be able to do it. So yeah. I just feel like you just can't, I, find, I think if you don't set your goals high, you will never ever mm -hmm. reach them. Because yeah. uh, although a lot of people maybe be like, oh no, the Olympics, like you can't, that's a bit too yeah. much. Like, I'm not going to say that. I'm not going to limit myself. Mm -hmm. And if I don't make the Olympics, as long as I've reached for that and I fall short, you know, at I'm least I say I've done everything. Mm -hmm. um so yeah I think even though I'm young and stuff I feel like it's now time to sort of be stepping up and trying to believe in in making teams like that yeah did it take the pressure off the Euros at all or were you still too much like I can do well here um yeah no that didn't take the pressure off <laughs> um Izzy was like 20 Keely was 19 and yeah. I was 22 so I actually was the oldest so I was <laughs> like this isn't good <laughs> uh, I'm not young here <laughs> So, uh, yeah, it didn't really make a difference at Euros. I sort of just knew what I wanted to do, what I could do. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like, well, going into 
Olympics now, I have to run a three second PB to make the team, which okay. would sound very difficult. Yeah. But I feel like I'm in very good shape, and I feel like if I had the right race, I would have already run that time. Yeah. Um. Whereas like my my two hundred two was off a very slow pace, and I just wound yeah. up more of a tactical race, but. I ran a 201 in training, um, so I knew I was faster than that anyway. Mm -hmm. But I feel like with sessions, how they've been going, and with another block of training for the outdoor season that's about to happen from tomorrow, yeah. um, I feel like I can definitely hit 159. Yeah. And I think it's just having belief that you can do it. <laughs> Is in a more pessimistic kind of question, do you kind of have, like, you know, still obviously being incredibly positive positive you've got this pact and promise to yourself yeah. is there still fear involved and do you still have to manage that 100 percent. like if you fail it's gutting like it's it's very upsetting to fail but i'm not gonna there's no point living with fear because you know it's not gonna get me there is it being scared of of if mm -hmm. i'm gonna make it or not so i'm just gonna I'm just going to do exactly what I did going into Europeans and do everything I possibly can, leave no stone unturned, which means I can stand on every line and be confident in my mm -hmm. ability and, and have that confidence. And, you know, if things don't go to plan, but I can say I've done everything, well, that's just part of the process and maybe it wasn't going to happen this year, but I've aimed for that and, and I will keep building on that every year until it does mm -hmm. happen. I'm very much a stubborn person that won't give up. So if it doesn't yeah. happen this time, it will happen. <laughs> <laughs> until it does. So, um, I mean, no, yeah. I'm not, yeah, I'm not panicking or, or fearful of it. I just feel like I'm going to aim for that. And if I get it, that's amazing. And if not, I'll get it eventually. <laughs> yeah, I think, well, I think that's a great way of like looking at it and like zooming out and just kind of, like like you said if you train the best and you leave no stun and you're gonna get better like yeah. the growth will happen regardless yeah and you will then get the kind of the external outcome of the reward of making that time or whatever yeah. number it is whether it's a first place or a time exactly when you when you get there but if you don't enjoy it and you know just work on getting better the, the, you know in the infinite game they call it yeah. exactly. then they'll all come to you naturally anyway yeah, and I feel like I massively enjoy training. I massively enjoy being around my training group and pushing myself and watching them push themselves. So I feel like if you're in a setup that you enjoy, you're probably going to do well as well because mm -hmm. it's not a chore. You're just enjoying trying to get to where you want to be. I love it. What weird question. Any <laughs> advice for like your future self? Ooh never done this one before <laughs> <laughs> my future self um oh I feel like just to not um panic at all because I mm -hmm. think as you get older I feel like you can put a lot more pressure on yourself um and I think to just sort of know how much work you've put in over the years to even get to that point and have confidence in the work that you've put in because mm -hmm. I feel like if I'm in the mindset I'm in now and I'm committed to put the work in, I feel like I should tell my future self not to worry because I'm going <laughs> to do it. <laughs> yeah, just kind of trust in that process yeah, that you've got it. Process and trust in, in your ability sort of thing, yeah. I love it. That's a good answer. It's a good answer on the spot as well. <laughs> yeah, I've seen you. I've done this one before. Um, so in this whole kind of promise to yourself as well, like with everything and all these details, what has been, apart from the diet maybe, or maybe if it, it is even the diet, but I'm, ass I'm assuming you had that on track before, what's yeah. kind of been like the biggest lesson and like learning kind of learning curve you've gone on just with all the attention to the details? Um definitely mindset I think mm -hmm. having a new mindset has has definitely helped I feel like yeah just little things like diet sleep all the little bits and pieces that you know you a lot of people slack on and we put 100% into our training but if we're not looking after the little mm -hmm. thing then then that definitely will affect our performance and it will affect the way we can train on and how much we can get out of ourselves so that is definitely something um I believe you know. Yeah, like, would you, do you, um, kind of, what do you think on this kind of saying, phrase, whatever, in the better person, better performance kind of thing? 100%, yeah, I feel like if you're a happier person, if you're, you know, you're generally more energetic when you're happy, um, 
it's a different sort of like a positivity thing oh, i saw this thing actually the other day um and they say like when you look up it's very easy to think about positive thoughts and when you look down it's very easy to think of negative thoughts so okay when you feel a little bit demotivated, you should look up and think of all the positive things because apparently when your eyes are up, it's very hard to actually think something negative. Have you tried it out? Has it been tried and tested? Yeah, I was like, oh, that's actually quite true, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I just think um, mindset-wise, I yeah. feel like that's a good little tip if you're feeling a little look bit up. demotivated. <laughs> so everyone who heard it here first, look up. <laughs> <laughs> They're going to be like, no, nah, I'm really thinking negative. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that don't work <laughs> but yeah. I feel like it was a good little thing to think about <laughs> no 100% I, I haven't heard that before I'm gonna have to try that now I'm yeah, definitely gonna try, have to try it, it. Later. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah no but yeah so I think because I think that's a myth that is also kind of surrounded around uh, surrounded yeah. in sport that you know you've got to be all in it for yourself you've got to you know you and especially in, in football as well it's big and even like the three the, like the two other girls you're, you're racing with yeah. there's this kind of thing where like part of you saying I've got to be in it all for myself like yeah you know, this is about me it's not about you and football's the same like there's a big kind of exactly. comparison thing yeah. going on and I think you can't let like external things affect you so mm-hmm. I think a lot of people things that are going on in their life can like m- like let that affect their mood let that affect and then once it affects your mood that affects your energy that affects like what mm-hmm. you're putting your energy into and it can be like a downward spiral if you let the external affect the internal. So I think um, it's definitely something you sort of got to have the ability to switch off from any negativity or things like that. Like, I mean, this year I've actually like, I've been sponsored by Nike for three years and then Mm -hmm. this year I lost my sponsorship. So Mm -hmm. um, with COVID they had to make cuts and I'm now like not sponsored. So Mm -hmm in a lot of people's world that would be a panic and that would be like well how am I going to fund this you know I'm not making any money from it sort of thing and that would have overcome a lot of people but I have just tried to keep cool and calm Mm -hmm. (laughs) and I felt like in a way um I just thought well I'm going to back myself because no one else is going to back mm-hmm. you, don't back yourself. And I'm going to give it everything and I'm going to compete well at the championships. And then I'm going to hopefully um, get more sponsorship after competing well. So that was sort of my thinking behind it. Like, well, okay, that's happened, but what can I do now to make sure that I do get another sponsorship contract and things like that. Mm-hmm. So that was definitely put your head down, carry on training, nothing changes and, and go and compete the best you can so that, someone else wants you or something like that yeah that's that's an amazing kind of mindset and I'm getting this kind of vibe that you're pretty like bulletproof at the moment um (laughs) in that like you know the quote says if you know I think it is if you can't fix the like you can't you can never fix the external it's always internal yeah and you know I think you're kind of got that to a tea town at the moment uh, yeah <laughs> at the moment yeah like I, I feel like there's no point moping around there's no point being negative mm-hmm. because that's actually just going to make the situation worse so it's very yeah. much I'm quite a positive person in general life anyway so I just sort of think well whatever it is what it is and you know you mm-hmm. need to try and make the best of a bad situation <laughs> no I love it I think it's brilliant and like you know you've got this kind of balance because even if there are kind of tough times like you said when you know you have a bad race or whatever you accept it and you know that's the key to them moving on and then you've got all this other stuff to do so I think you've kind of got that balance kind of in control pretty much um what we always kind of finish on on the podcast is this final question is what makes you more than a runner what makes you human Hmm. (laughs) (laughs) I'm very very family orientated Mm -hmm. um that is like something has just been installed in me from a very young age very loyal to my family very I just love yeah around my family that's like my favorite thing like calling my family after a race that's the first thing Mm. I'll do like my granddad he's like obsessed with my running so I'm giving (laughs) it straight away so I think definitely that homely um family vibe I've got going like I'm I'm just very much um just like a family girl and like grounded my my boyfriend my family (laughs) I'm very much like yeah very, just uh, very like grounded and normal I love that 
um, <laughs> I've got I've got one more question because I've just remembered this. Yeah. Um, what would you value most in other people? Because obviously, if your family are really close, what do you value most in that? Uh, I think loyalty. I mm-hmm. think um, just being loyal to one another and looking out for one another. Um, and yeah, just yeah, just always looking out for each other. I think that's a very nice trait to have and it's nice to just feel like looked after sometimes you feel like you've always got each other's back so it's kind of nice to have that sort of unit that you feel like sort of untouchable in yeah especially with obviously doing so much on your own you yeah. know, as a runner yeah exactly kind of like... I spend a lot of time on my own so it's very nice to have like a big family net like um sort of community like to come <laughs> driving you when you when exactly when you need it when you've done yeah, all that exactly. yeah it's brilliant. Thank you so much for your advice. Your uh, looking up, I think, was <laughs> could be a new one. All negative, just look up, okay? <laughs> um, and yeah, all your kind of obviously, yeah, all your positive talk and everything and stories. So thank you very much for coming on. Is there any kind of advice you'd have to anyone else, kind of just going on their journey right now? Or I think enjoy what you do is the biggest piece of advice I can give. Um, I feel like when you're enjoying it you know it's easy Mm -hmm. um so just try and take enjoyment and try and be like grateful for the things you do have Mm -hmm. Uh, I think a lot of the time we spend ourselves and our time thinking oh I don't have that or I want this and actually take a minute to think what do I have what am I grateful for and Mm -hmm. I think once you have that appreciation you you're a little bit more settled in life and then Mm -hmm. you can sort of enjoy your life rather than always try and have something that you you want or you don't have I think Mm -hmm. that's sort of like the best advice I can give is to just feel grateful and enjoy yeah that's (laughs) important that's so important because I I always remember the thing that says you can actually like it's physically impossible to feel grateful and fear at the same time yeah which again (laughs) yeah (laughs) that paired with look up I think we've completed (laughs) it (laughs) counting of knowledge today (laughs) oh thank you so much for having me I really enjoyed it Thank you very much for coming on. And yeah, um, for everyone listening, obviously I'll link everything below. And yeah, brilliant. Thank you very much.